Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. Hey guys, awesome to have you here today. I'm gonna give you some great tips to help you start hitting your drive more accurate, more solid, and a little bit farther. And I'm gonna walk it through in the basics, let you know some things that took me a lot of time to figure out and are really gonna help your game. So first, let's go over alignment with the driver. Now, first off, we can kind of imagine our target line what I like to do when you're practicing your driver on the driving range is just put some kind of stick or you could put down another club, point it toward the target in the distance where you want to hit. Now, most players as they begin to play golf tend to struggle a little bit with a slice. So that means that their right shoulder, their right arm and their body are kind of coming over the top. I'm exaggerating here so you can see this is not this extreme usually, but it's coming over the top, outside, and then that club is kind of wiping across the ball this way with the face open. And that causes the ball to start either straight or maybe even a little bit to the right and then it really slices off well to the right. Now the tendency there because the ball keeps on slicing to the right is to line up farther and farther left. Well, that just exaggerates the problem where now we're going to start coming more over the top to try to get the ball more to the left. It's going to slice even more so the farther left you line up the more it's going to slice. What you'll notice with pros is that typically they're going to be somewhere close to parallel with their target line. What I recommend is to close your stance just a little bit. Have this front foot a little bit more to the right. It serves two purposes. Number one, it's gonna help you come more from the inside and get more of that draw. Now you'll learn to release the face. And number two, as you swing, you kind of imagine this driver's on a hula hoop or swinging on a hula hoop here. As that, drive, as that club starts to move back up, it actually moves a little bit more to the left because you're hitting driver on the upward swing. So by lining up a little bit farther to the right, now as you start to swing back up, your club's actually moving pretty square to the ball. So set down this alignment stick. And one of the keys with top speed golf is you have to train things a little bit different. I like to go in the extremes. We practice this variability training. I want you to line up one where your feet are way to the left, make a swing, and this is on the driving range, see where the ball goes. Then line up to the right, way to the right, swing one there, still try to hit it toward your target again, and then notice what that does to the flight of the ball and the curvature of the ball. Let me go ahead and, and give you an example of those. This first one I'm gonna line up to the left. Naturally, you're gonna see this ball wants to start slicing a little bit more. So you see that ball started to slice way out to the right. Terrible shot really started to go over there and that's gonna be just in the right rough. Now I'm gonna do the opposite here. I want you to go back and forth doing this for 10 drives. Don't worry about hitting good shots, just notice what happens as we do this. Now I'm gonna line up to the right. Because my target's to the left, naturally I start to roll my hands more and get a bit more of a draw. So now that ball curved to the left. And again, I'm exaggerating here. That's in the left edge of the fairway. But by changing my alignment, instinctively it's much easier to get a draw because you know subconsciously you just know oh i gotta release that club face so practice that out on the driving range alternate 10 shots one way to the left one way to the right one way to the left one way to the right then from there you can kind of fine tune find that perfect alignment for your individual swing that helps you to get the ball to go straight all right so now let's move to ball position this is really critical if i want to drive far if i want to hit the ball really far I need to be catching that ball on the upswing. Not a lot of loft on a driver, and essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get this club moving on the upward swing and de-lofting so it's almost like a knuckleball. The ball starts to spin this way and knuckle through the wind. That's the visualization that you have. In reality, it's always gonna have some backspin, but that's what we wanna be picturing in our mind. So to do that, to get the most distance here, I wanna tee the ball up fairly high. The higher you tee it up, the more potential you have to hit it on the upswing, the more potential you have for distance. That's why you'll notice long drive guys tee the ball way up in the air, really, really high, so they can really hit up on it. I want you to tee the ball up at least a half a ball over top of the driver head. I'm going a little bit more exaggerated here just to, to kind of show you what I mean. Play that ball at least, where if you're looking at it from face on, it's gonna be somewhere around the left heel all the way up here to the middle of the left foot. I don't wanna get this ball way back in my stance, or I'm gonna to tend to hit down on it more. I may hit some good shots. This is more of a conservative approach. If you just wanna get one in the fairway, this might be good. But if I really wanna get some good distance, I'm gonna play that ball up in my stance. As that club swings, you can imagine the bottom of the arc is here 
and it's actually working back up as I'm actually hitting into the golf ball. So let's try that out. Put it up in your stance. Remember, line up a little bit to the right here, and then I'm gonna work on hitting kind of a high top spin knuckleball is what I'm gonna visualize so that ball really penetrates through the wind and gets my maximum distance. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, crush that one right down the middle. Let's take a look, that's about as good as I can hit one there. Let's take a look at the flight scope numbers now and see what my angle of attack was. So in flight scope, it's telling me that that shot was positive 2.8 on the upswing, meaning my club is moving up 2.8, 115 miles of club head speed, 301 yards, 300.9 yards of carry, 333, 334.3, on the drive. I can't do much better than that. All right, so now we gotta get some distance. It doesn't matter how straight, how good our alignment is, if we're hitting on the upswing. If we can't swing that club pretty fast, we're not gonna hit it very far. PJ Tour average is about 113 miles an hour. LPJ Tour average is about 96 miles an hour. And I think the Senior Tour, Champions Tour, those are the 50 and over offers, are swinging about 106 or 104 on average. I can't remember the exact number there. So that gives you a good idea of kind of where you should be if you're an elite player. Um, but the big key here is, no matter where you're at, we can make some technique changes that are gonna help you to speed that up. The first one is gonna be how much I turn my body. So if you watch really good, longer players that hit it pretty far, they're gonna let their hips, their shoulders, and their arms go really far back. So if I stop my swing here, and this is as far as I go back, my shoulders haven't turned very much, my hands haven't gone very far back, and I only have from here to where my hands come at contact. So I only have from here to there to accelerate this club. This very short amount of time I can move my hands. If I can let my hips, my shoulders, and my arms go farther back, now I'm creating more room to accelerate the club. The more room you have, the faster you're gonna swing if you put out the same amount of effort. So unless you're really big, really strong, you're the kind of person that can throw a 90 mile an hour fastball, slam dunk, you know, on a basketball court, I would recommend going a lot longer back. Even if you can do all those things, if you go longer back, you're just gonna get even more distance with that. So let's do a drill here. Now we're gonna go ahead, take your stance, put your arms out to the side, and I want you to practice rotating your body until your arms are kind of pointing what would be behind the golf ball. So I'm setting up here, my arms are turning behind the golf ball. As I come on through, now I'm letting this right foot come up, I'm letting my hips pivot through, my arms will be turning past the golf ball here, and then I'm coming to my good full finish. So it's gonna look like this as we do this drill. And that just gets your body loosened up, gets you making that good full turn and really hitting it hard. So as you do that, 20 or 30 reps, you're gonna feel that same feeling, or that, that free flowing feeling, then incorporate that with your actual driver. Now make some practice swings, another 20 or so practice swings, getting that good full turn, both back and through, then you're ready to hit some shots. On this one, I'm really gonna focus on that big turn and let's see what kind of swing speed we can get. There you go, not quite as solid as the one before, but I'll still take that. Felt like I swung pretty hard on it. Let's see what kind of miles per hour we had. All right, my club head speed is 118.5. Very happy with that. 284 carry, it went a little bit lower, really ran over the hill and got 321 total distance. All right, so the final piece here, we gotta release this golf club. The natural tendency, what I always did when I first started to play, what I see basically every golfer, I've seen thousands of golfers in lessons, and every single one of them has the natural tendency when they first start to play, which is as you get from the top, you wanna to hit this ball really hard with a lot of speed. So we start to push the club, to cast the club early. And what ends up happening is we lose this angle called lag in our wrist. We burn all that speed up back here. And then when we get to the ball, the club's actually slowing down. What we wanna have happen is we wanna actually increase this lag as we start down, get a good sharp angle here between our club and, the, and our arms. And then from there, we have to release this club out in front. So I want you to do a really easy drill here to get familiar with that release and start to, to get that speed where you need it, which is right at the golf ball. So I want you to just go ahead and take a half back swing. Imagine this is our downswing here. And I want you to get this sharp angle between your hands and arms. Now one key is I don't want this club pointing straight up and down. I want it to be a little bit flatter from here. Some people call this getting into the slot. Really key to being able to hit solid shots over and over. So I get in the slot here, I have this nice angle of lag, and then from there, I want you to open your hips, go ahead and let your feet rotate, your knees rotate. I'm gonna open my hips, and I'm gonna release that club to where now I've gotten rid of all these angles. That's what we call the straight line release in our top speed golf system, and I've let that club whip on through. So a couple practice swings, halfway back, and then go to the release. 
hips, shoulders, arms, everything's released in front. Do that about 10 or 15 times just to get the overall feel of that motion. You don't have to try to do it fast. You don't have to do anything fancy there. Just get that feel. Then we're gonna incorporate that same feel as we're making a full practice swing. So your full back swing, I'm gonna feel that lag. I'm gonna feel the club release in front. If I do that, now I'm gonna get that whip action happening right at the golf ball. So here, a great way to feel this and a great way to train differently so that actually you get the feeling faster is exaggerate both extremes. As you start down, cast the club and then try to swing through. So it'd be something like this and you'll see how I don't have very much speed. And then the next one, get a big angle of lag, release the club in front. And now you can start to hear that whipping on through contact. So 15 to 20 practice swings alternating. One cast, one good lag one, and then release in front. If you always visualize releasing in front of the golf ball, that makes things so much easier as you go out to play. So that once you get comfortable with that, let's go ahead and hit a couple more, or we'll hit, go ahead and hit on some on the range. I'm gonna go ahead and try to really rip one. I may not be the straightest on this one, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get it farthest, the farthest of any of them that I've had so far. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, a little to the right, still a good drive. I don't think I'm gonna beat my last one. I, I killed the one before that, or two swings ago. So let's see what the flight scope says. Club head speed was 117.4, 290 carry, 320 total distance. Hey, hitting it well, follow those keys. Get the right ball position, get your alignment so you can work on those fades and draws and then straighten it out. And then get that lag and release in front. It's gonna make driving so much more easy. What do we do when the driver is absolutely not working at all? It's going all over the place. Maybe you're playing the first round with a new playing partner, a coworker, somebody that you wanna impress, maybe your boss, and you get up, you show up to the range that day, the driver is absolutely going everywhere. You're hooking it, you're slicing it, you're hitting it thin, you're hitting it, uh, popping it up, doing all kinds of crazy stuff with the driver that you normally don't do and you're really worried about it. Maybe you're about to tee off in your club championship or a local tournament and this is happening to you. It's really kind of freaks you out. You're kind of worried and you're thinking, oh man, this is gonna be a terrible day. Well, I'm gonna give you four sure fire tips. When you're having that bad day with the driver, you follow these, you're gonna get right back on track. Let's go and get started. All right, so tip number one, we wanna choke up on this driver. So if we're having trouble with this and we're really having the ball go a lot of different ways, one of the easiest ways to do this is to choke up. Now I recommend taking your hand and the, the bottom of your pinky should be about two inches or so from the bottom of the grip. That's a good amount to choke up. If we go way, way choked up like this, we're almost down on the, on the shaft itself off the grip then we're gonna lose so much speed, it's gonna to be tough to get any kind of distance. So I wanna choke up just a little bit to get more control of the head and to be able to feel the driver face a little bit better. But the downside of this is it is gonna hurt our distance a little bit. So let's go ahead and hit one here with my flight scope and we'll see what the distance is choking up on the driver and then I'll hit another one full speed and, and see what happens there. So here's the choked up driver. Let's see how far this one goes. There we go, right down the left side of the fairway. I hit that one really, really solid, so I think my numbers are gonna be pretty good, but we'll notice my club head speed is probably a little bit down. So if I take a look at my flight scope, we're gonna see my club head speed was 114. I mean, I absolutely killed that thing though. Hit it dead solid, 282 carry, after the rollout, 313 total distance. So it's not like I'm losing a ton, but I am gonna lose, let's say two or three miles an hour of club head speed by choking up on the grip a couple inches there. But what it, this does, the reason this works, is when I choke up, I'm essentially getting the club head closer to my hands, and now I have more control of the club head. It's like swinging a, a children's club. You have this little short club, it feels really easy to swing. You're probably not ever gonna miss the fairway using a junior club. You're just not gonna hit it as far as you do your normal driver. So that's the first tip, choke up on this. Now the second tip, I wanna make sure, again, I can feel the club head. I can feel the face of this club. When the driver isn't working, about 85% of the direction that ball starts is dictated by the face. So if that ball starts way to the right or way to the left, that's because the face is open and closed. So the better we can feel this face, the easier the day is gonna be. Now a great trick to help you feel the face when the things are off, when your timing's off, is to flip that club upside down and make about four or five practice swings, keeping your hands really light, trying to feel the grip end of the club. So I'm holding it at the very end of the shaft with the grip pointing down and I'm making four or five little practice swings here. And what this is doing 
This shaft is so much lighter than the club head. When I flip this back over, now I'm really gonna be able to feel where the club head is. The last thing you wanna do is grab two or three clubs. Sometimes I'll see people grab two or three irons, hold them all together and swing those to loosen up. Because that's so heavy, when I have two or three clubs in my hand, I'm gonna lose feeling for where the driver face is and that's gonna make the, the club go or the, the ball go all over the place. So two, five, four or five swings, just a few swings to get loose to really feel light with your grip, and then turn that club over, and I want you to do a couple things for me. Number one, we're gonna release that face a little bit more. So I want you to make three or four practice swings, releasing the face, getting those hands to turn over a little bit more. That would be your draw swing. Now I can start to feel that face turning over, and then I'm gonna have two or three swings where I feel the face a little bit more open, which would be my fade swing. So again, you're not having to hit shots here. You're just getting a, a feel for the face, getting a feel for releasing the club a little bit more, if you're struggling slicing it too much, that's what you're gonna to wanna to feel. If you're struggling hooking the ball, you're gonna feel having the face a little bit more open. Now let's go ahead and hit one with my normal swing speed and let's see how much distance we gain or lose or my normal length of my, my grip here. So the first one, I swung, I believe 113 or so and I hit it so solid, it went 313. Let's see if I can get a little bit more swing speed now with my club all the way on the end here and see that how that affects how far this ball goes. All right, there we go. So that one, again, down the middle of the fairway, but I didn't hit that one quite as solid as the one that I choked up. I'm not loose out here today yet either. This is the first video of the day. So I'm not always gonna be hitting the, the driver dead solid right off the bat, just like everybody else. So on that one, I had three miles an hour extra club head speed, but you'll see 276 carry, about seven yards shorter than the one that I actually swung slower and I choked up on the club. And 295, so 15, actually a little bit more, uh, a little bit closer to, to 18 yards shorter on that one, even though my club head speed was higher. So if you're, if you're having a tough, tough time hitting it solid and controlling where the ball goes, just choke on, up on that a little bit. Now the next thing we're gonna do here to really get a feel for this is the step drill. So what I want you to, to feel when I'm struggling to hit the ball solid, usually my weight shift is off. Sometimes I'll be falling back, falling away from the golf ball. You start to get those tops, you start to get the balls that go up in the air, a lot of inconsistencies with that. And sometimes I really just feel awkward like I'm having to use all hands and arms because my weight shift isn't good. So let's do a surefire drill. It's gonna make this really, really easy. I want you to set up with your feet together. I'm gonna have the club kind of hovering over the ground. Now, as soon as I start my club swinging back, I'm gonna go ahead and start stepping forward. What this is gonna ensure that I do is as my left foot is in the air, so let's go ahead and do one little small swing so you can see what this looks like. But as my left foot is in the air, that ensures that all my weight is on my right side. That's the backswing. As I'm making this backswing, I have to shift my weight to the right side. And as I make my downswing, I have to shift my weight to the left side. There's tons of research out there showing pressure plates. So they have these plates that they put under your feet to see how people shift their weight. I have never seen one player, one great player, that doesn't shift their weight to the right on the backswing and shift their weight to the left on the, back, on the downswing. Lots of people say, oh, I feel like I'm centered, I'm staying on my left, or they're keeping their weight left the entire time. When you put this to the test, when you look at the science behind this, that's simply not happened. Every player has a weight shift to the right and a weight shift to the left. If I cheat it by doing this drill, it makes it way easier. So as I keep my feet together, as soon as my left foot lifts up, my right foot is the only foot on the ground, so it has to be a weight shift to the right. There has to be all my pressure to the right. Now, as I step forward, the only way to get my foot to move forward is to have a weight shift to the left. And then as I let my foot push into the ground on the downswing, I'm gonna let my right foot come all the way up on the ground here. So just my toe of my right foot is on the, on the ground. That ensures that all my weight is on my left. So if you do this drill, there's really no way to mess this up. As long as we get the timing right, it's just a surefire way to get your weight shift nailed every time. So start with your feet together. The key trick here is as soon as you start your backswing, that's when you wanna begin the step forward. What I don't wanna do is get all the way to the top of my backswing and then step forward on my downswing. I'm stepping forward as soon as I start my swing. And then as I finish, I'm making sure my toe is all the way on the ground. 
and my chest is rotated all the way around. I'm, I'm finishing over my left foot and really pausing there for a second or two so that you can make sure that you're in balance. Do four or five of those while you're on the range, while you're on the first tee, I guarantee you, it's gonna be way easier to hit straighter shots. Now finally here, the last key is, what is your go-to shot? Everybody has one type of shot, whether it's a fade or a draw, that they can hit time after time. Now for me, if I have to get one in the fairway, it's a little easier for me to do a fade. The problem is I lose a little bit of distance when I'm doing that, but if I'm hitting the ball pretty wild and it's the first couple holes, I wanna make sure I get some in the fairway, I'm gonna tee that ball up a little bit lower. What that's gonna do, it's gonna ensure that I, I don't uh, hook it. It's very tough for me to hook the ball when the ball is teed up really low. So I'm gonna tee it up a little bit lower. If this is my normal height, I'm just gonna go about a half inch lower than normal. And then I feel like I'm gonna hit a fade out there. So let's put all three together. Number one, I'm gonna choke up. I've done my drills where I swing the club head nice and light. I got a feel for the face. For me, again, I'm, I'm done my step drills to feel my weight shift. And now I'm gonna play my go-to shot, or if I had to bet a thousand dollars, what would I be willing to say, hey, I'm gonna be able to hit this one pretty good. I'll bet you a thousand dollars I can do this. That's my go-to shot. So this one's gonna be a fade. I'm gonna lose a little bit of distance, but I'm gonna find that first fairway. All right, right down the right center. I hit that one nice. Follow those four steps. You're gonna get off, get started with some more confidence and you're gonna hit a lot more fairways. Hey guys, welcome back. I got an awesome video for you. We're gonna talk about how to hit your driver a lot straighter and also how to pick up some good club head speed while you're at it. Nobody wants to hit their driver straight and just be kind of dinking it out there. We want to give it a good rip, get some good distance, and hit it straight at the same time, which is exactly what I'm going to go over today. Now, the first thing, the drill we're going to use to do this, the first drill we're going to use is an acceleration drill. It's a little half back swing. Our left arm should be going to about parallel with the ground. You notice your club's about perpendicular to that or a 90 degree angle at this point of the swing. And then from there, I really want to accelerate through all the way to that good full finish. I'm trying to get as much speed here as I can. The reason we're doing this drill is a lot of times I'll see players that are struggling with consistency with the driver. They're going to the top of the backswing. They're using mostly arms, maybe casting the club a little bit, kind of hitting at the ball. And my hands and arms are very, very active in this. I'm not getting my body to lead the way and I'm not getting a lot of acceleration in the club. When I cast with my arms, I'm getting all this speed way back here in the swing. As my club comes closer and closer to contact, it's actually decelerating, which can close the face sometimes, it can open it the next time, just not gonna be as consistent as you want. So this one is really gonna gear in on a slow backswing, short backswing, and then really making sure we accelerate through with our body and then our arms here in a second. So the first piece of this, let's go ahead and set up and make some practice swings first. If you're doing these in your living room at home, go ahead and grab a club right now, work through these. If you don't do the drills, we're not gonna be hitting it longer and straighter. If you don't have a driver, it's completely fine. Grab whatever club you have. I'm gonna take it to a back swing here where my left arm's about parallel to the ground. And then to start down, I wanna feel like my knees separate and my hips start to open. If I was gonna to toss a ball down this fairway, so if I just grabbed a ball here and just toss it down the fairway, I'm beginning to take it halfway back, let my knees separate, my hips open. You'll notice as I come through contact, or what would be contact, my hips and shoulders, everything is opening up. That's a real big key for consistency and speed. If I let everything open up, I can just toss that ball right down the fairway every single time. That's how everybody I've ever asked to toss a ball does it. If we're casting from the top, we're almost taking that ball and throwing it across our body. That would look something more like this where I'm staying closed with my body, I'm not opening up and I'm trying to throw the ball by doing that, well, it gets very awkward. I could release the club a little bit too much, not release it enough. If we get the body to open, now it's gonna be very consistent. Another way to think about this is if I'm opening my body, half backswing, I'm opening my body, it's almost like I'm gonna take this club, let's go ahead and grab another iron here. If I imagine that I'm taking this club, letting it, my body open up, everything's facing more toward the target and now, I'm gonna go ahead and launch that club down the fairway. Hopefully I don't break my iron, but that's the sensation that I'm getting. If I put this to the test, I've got a great little device here called the Voice Caddy, the Swing Caddy 2. This is not too expensive a device. It measures your club head speed, your carry distance, your ball speed, really cool radar for a fraction of the price of my big fancy devices. Here I have my Foresight GC Quad. This one's about $18,000. Let's compare these two. If I'm doing this drill correctly, just this little half swing, 
I should be able to get pretty decent club head speed and pretty decent distance with this. So if you have a device like that, go ahead and crank it out, set it down, and let's see what the club head speed is. So again here, half backswing. I'm really gonna let that body open up, really accelerate on through, and get some good club head speed, even with that half backswing. There we go, hit that one hard. Really felt like my knees separated and I really rotate on through there. Club head speed was 111. My ball speed was 160 and my carry distance was 263. Pretty good with half backswing. I may have gone a little bit farther back, but I really made sure I accelerated on through there. My voice caddy, swing caddy two, says 108 club head speed. So 111 within a few miles an hour, pretty close there. It says 158 ball speed. This one says 160, within two miles an hour, $18,000 machine, less than $300 machine. And then it calculates the actual distance. I launched that one a little low. This one, the swing caddy can't calculate that, so it averaged a little bit more. It said 287 driver distance versus 263. But the club head speed and the ball speed are very, very similar. Now, from there, what if I start to slice one a little bit? This can be a drill where we got this acceleration happening but maybe I start to slice a few out to the right. What's happening there is I'm going ahead and making this half backswing. I'm accelerating on through, but what's happening is my, my arms are staying wide open. Look at that club face, how it's pointing way out to the right. The sensation here is if you look at tour players, their hips are gonna be about 45 degrees open at contact. Their club is moving square to the target at contact. So if I'm swinging toward this camera, if I was to keep my hips square, my club is going this way in relationship to my hips. So if you feel like you're normally swinging with your hips, hips are square, club head square, when you start opening those hips more, that could get you more to the left. That's your natural swing if you're not opening those hips enough. We need to swing more to the right and release that club head. So again, if those hips are square, I'm swinging out to the right. At the same time, if you look at this club face, I'm letting that turn closed. So I'm feeling like I'm coming around the outside of that ball. My club face to me feels like it's going like this and it's turning on over to release that club face. So it's swinging to the right and turning over at the same time. That's that draw type swing path. Once I open my hips up doing that, now that's gonna be more square with contact. So those are two of the big misconceptions I see with that. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and wake up my swing caddy. The cool thing about this comes with a little remote here too. So it's pretty fun to practice with. They sent me this one to test out and I was really surprised when I used it more and more how good it is for the price of it. Uh, but here, again, let's open up those hips. Let's release that club. And I'm gonna try to get a little bit of a draw as I'm doing this little half swing. There we go. So that one drew, really hit that one hard. So I got a lot of speed there because I really accelerated on the round. 109 club head speed. 158 ball speed, 250 carry. Again, this one's calculating a little bit more because it's calculating the launch differently. Actually, I have it set up on the wrong club. That's probably why it's doing that. Switch it to driver. 108 club head speed, 158, exactly the same as this one. One mile an hour off on the club head speed between the two, exactly the same ball speed between the two. So now I've got this half swing, I'm really accelerating. Hopefully you're working at it. If you don't have a swing caddy, that's completely fine. Use some type of device though to measure your club head speed, make sure it's going up and up as you're doing this half swings. Now let's go ahead and take it to the full swing. So what's happening here, I'm making the exact same motion where I'm letting those legs rotate, letting that club release, and I'm swinging on through, but now I'm just gonna take it a little farther back. So instead of the half back swing, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate all the way up to the top and then feel exactly the same as I'm coming through contact. I'll see that swing speed bump up a few more miles an hour, but I shouldn't see any loss in distance. I should actually gain some distance and I will gain a little bit of accuracy there too because now I can make a little more free flowing swing as I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and try one out here full speed, see what happens. There we go, hit that one great right down the middle. It's about as good as I can hit one. 170 ball speed, 119 club head speed. We're going 284 carry. This one calculated a little bit more carry. 116 club head speed, so within one mile an hour, or uh, three miles an hour. 171 ball speed, 169 ball speed, pretty accurate there. Just calculate a little bit more distance on my, my voice caddy. So put those drills together now. Let's go ahead and do all three. 
Number one, half back swing, really accelerate on through. I'm looking at maximum club head speed. Number two, I'm, if my hips are square, I'm feeling like I'm swinging to the right and releasing that club head. I don't wanna feel like I'm doing this or I'm holding it face wide open. I'm gonna hit a lot of blocks and slices to the right. Number three, exact same feeling. Go ahead and take it to the top of the swing. Go ahead and give it a rip and you're gonna get a lot of distance. All right guys, so now what do we do next? We talked about how to really accelerate that club coming through contact and a big key to that, we have to have a good amount of lag to save up that energy to let that whip on through, through there. So it's kind of a one-two punch. We gotta save that energy up with lag and then we gotta release that energy accelerating through contact like we talked about in this video. I've got an awesome bonus video for you. It's a bow and arrow drill. It's actually one of my better drills talking about how we can increase this angle of lag in the downswing, just like the pros are doing. I'm gonna walk you through it piece by piece. The video is gonna play here in a second. Just click the card on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that. You pair that lag up with this great acceleration we talked about here today, you're gonna be ripping those drives. Let's go ahead and get started with the bow and arrow drill. We're gonna get some more lag. I know you guys really want a lot of lag. All the pros have it. And I got a great three-piece drill the Robin's gonna help us demonstrate. The right forearm, the right shoulder, they're trying to come down really hard to start the swing, and we burn up all our speed prior to getting down to the ball. So we're not saving up any of that energy. Imagine there's kind of like a, a, a pouch with arrows in it, and I'm gonna pull the arrow out of the quiver and then swing on through. In grain, the reason this works is because I can't cast or that club's gonna come off my shoulder. I'm letting the, the start of my transition be across. 